నమస్తే వెల్కమ్ టు రీ సార్ స్పెషల్ లైవ్ షో ఈ రోజు గురుకుల మైన్స్ ఇంగ్లీష్ కి సంబంధించి పోయిటరీ సెక్షన్ లో కొన్ని ఇంపార్టెంట్ పోయమ్స్ గురించి డిస్కస్ చేసుకుందాం మరి ఆ పోయమ్స్ గురించి అందులో ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఏంటి ఎలా ప్రిపేర్ అవ్వాలి వీటన్నిటి గురించి కూడా మనకి అంబేడ్ శ్రీనివాసరావు గారు ఎప్పుడు కూడా మనకి ఇంగ్లీష్ సబ్జెక్ట్ కి సంబంధించి వివరణిస్తూ ఉంటారు వారి వాళ్ళకు కూడా మనతో సిద్ధంగా ఉన్నారు పరిచయం చేసుకుందాం నమస్తే అండి సో శ్రీనివాస్ గారు ఈ రోజు పోయిటరీ సెక్షన్ లో కొన్ని ఇంపార్టెంట్ పోయమ్స్ గురించి చెప్తా అన్నారు సావేంటి So let's start our discussion with uh, special greetings to the viewers and best wishes to them for their exams that is going to be conducted very soon. We have been discussing Gurukula Mains English part 2 paper and in that we started discussing important poems. that are prescribed for this examination though there are many poems many other texts because of time constraint we may not discuss everything here but we we'll surely spend some quality time discussing these some important poems because we are going to get some questions based on these poetic texts also i repeat our questions will be of three types one is based on the background of the authors and the poets the second is their works the third is the prescribed text ee mood inti meeda manam pattu sadinchali and uh, external you know help will be little as henry ford says life is 20% inspiration and 80% perspiration ani ante we get something from external source only up to 20% and the remaining 80% of hard work efforts we need to put in we should not depend on the external material completely and uh, you know we should have our own preparation as well why am i saying this because though the syllabus is very vast we may not be able to discuss everything here i hope the viewers would understand this then in the previous episode because of some technical issue so we we missed the first stanza of the poem home they brought her warrior dead written by alfred lord tennyson so let us just look at that first stanza a small correction and this stanza is uh, we can see it on the screen as well because those who are watching it from you know the other places if they do not have the poem you know through our screen we can get the idea of the poem so first stanza is anyway we discuss other stanzas so first stanza is home they brought her warrior dead so stanza started with you know the title of the poem itself and the second line is she nor swooned nor uttered cry all her maidens watching said she must weep or she will die and if you can look at the external feature of this poem it has rhyme scheme which can be understood from the first line and the third line last words dead rhymes with the word said of third line last word so we denote it with small a and small a and then second line last word cry fourth line last word die rhyme each other so we name it as small b and b this is an external feature and then if we can quickly understand what exactly the poet is trying to say through this particular first stanza of the poem is home they brought her warrior dead people brought that soldier's dead body and she we do not know who she is but we already discussed the poem so she the wife of the you know deceased the dead soldier had shown no expression at all no emotion at all she nor swooned nor uttered a cry so there was no disturbance to be seen on her face or in her personality that's what the line says third line all her maidens all the you know work working women they were watching because when there is a such a shocking news happen in someone's life you surely expect 
some kind of a you know, shocking expression, but they did not find any such expression in her. That means she must weep or she will die, that's what they commented, the maiden said, because one should express their emotions, whatever could be the emotion. So she, she should weep, cry, or if you don't cry, if you, you know, control your natural emotions, that will be very uh, disastrous and dangerous too. That's why they say, this is the first stanza. The remaining stanzas we already discussed in the previous you know, episode. I think the viewers can just have a look at that in the previous episode. Then let's quickly go to the other poem by Elizabeth Barron Browning. We have two Brownings in our syllabus, Robert Browning as well as Elizabeth Barron Browning, who is none other than the wife of Robert Browning. And a quick introduction about this poet, poetess, we say, she published a collection of poems. Some of the important poems are sonnets from the Portuguese. We must remember the works of the poets because we might get a question on their works as well, their background, their works, and their prescribed poem for this examination. So one such work of Elizabeth Barron Browning is Sonnets from Portuguese, and then Aurora Lay is another important work of Baron Browning, and another very important uh, work uh, penned by Robert Elizabeth Baron Browning is the Seraphim and other poems. So he, some of the important works, man, Guru Tibet Kali, and uh, there is a chance of asking a question based on these two. Then something about her life: she married Robert Browning and moved to Italy. So after marriage, she settled in Italy. That's what we understand from her background. And another important point is most of her works, that means poems, deal with human emotions. Very important point. So literature itself deals with human beings, their lives, their disturbances, their success, their celebrations, and very importantly, human emotions. And so we can understand, you know, what kind of uh, emotions human beings have. So this is a speciality. Then, if we can quickly have a look at her work, The Cry of Children, which is prescribed for our examinations. So, he prescribed text only questions of style. So, viewers under Kuda, whoever is preparing for examinations, he text copies petkuni, what analysis, than meaning, Ardham just couldn't try jayali. Kone questions dhan me the good So this is another appeal to the candidates who are preparing seriously for this means. So let us look at the poem. It says, for oh, say the children, we are weary. So this is about children. If you can quickly look at the Victorian era, so there was a lot of exploitation. Children were exploited at various factories and there was no time schedule for the labor. So those were the issues in Victorian era and because of so many people who contributed for the change, there was some, you know, balance in their lives. So Anduloka, so every poem of Victorian period talks about the developments, disturbances of that period. So then we can easily remember. If we can go uh, to the poem then. For oh, say the children, we are weary, we are tired. Children Antunar. Children generally are supposed to play, read, enjoy their life. But here the the very first line of the poem starts with tiring children. We do not know why they are tired. And we cannot run or leap. Enta tired on arante, enta exhausted on arante, they cannot move. They cannot either run nor leap. And that's the activity children are supposed to do, jumping and playing. For example, if a child is disturbing the mother, especially at home, a young child, two or three year old, mother always complains to the doctor, saying that my son is uncontrollable, do something, give some injection. 
డాక్టర్ సేస్ నథింగ్ ఈజ్ రాంగ్ విత్ ద చైల్డ్ చిన్న పిల్లోడు అల్లరి చేయకపోతే ప్రాబ్లం అల్లరి చేస్తే ఈజ్ రైట్లీ గ్రోయింగ్ అని అర్థం ఇక్కడ అదే చిల్డ్రన్ దే కుడ్ నాట్ డూ ఇట్ అంటే వాట్ ఎవర్ దే ఆర్ సపోజ్ టు డూ ఇన్ దేర్ చైల్డ్ హుడ్ దే ఆర్ నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు డూ ఇట్ ఎందుకో రీజన్ చూద్దాం ఇక్కడ ఇఫ్ వీ కేర్ ఫర్ ఎనీ మీడోస్ ఇట్ వర్ మియర్లీ టు డ్రాప్ డౌన్ ఇన్ దెమ్ అండ్ స్లీప్ మీడోస్ అంటే అ గార్డెన్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ లాన్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఎంజాయ్ ప్లేయింగ్ ఇన్ ద గార్డెన్ ఇన్ ద లాన్ ఇక్కడ ఈ చిల్డ్రన్ అంటున్నారు దే ఆర్ ఆఫ్ డిఫరెంట్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఏంటి అని అంటారు వీ కుడ్ సీ లాన్స్ అండ్ గార్డెన్స్ బట్ వీ కెనాట్ ప్లే దేర్ బట్ వీ గో దేర్ నాట్ టు ప్లే బట్ టు రిలాక్స్ దట్ మీన్స్ వీ ఆర్ టైర్డ్ సో వై దే ఆర్ టైర్డ్ అనేది మనకు నెక్స్ట్ స్టాండ్ చాలా తెలుస్తుంది సో ఎలిజబెత్ బ్యారన్ బ్రౌనింగ్ వండర్ఫుల్లీ డెపిక్టెడ్ ది సీన్ ఆఫ్ విక్టోరియన్ ఎరా త్రూ హర్ పోమ్ నెక్స్ట్ స్టాన్జా సేజ్ ఆర్ నీజ్ ట్రెంబుల్ సోలీ ఇన్ ద స్టాపింగ్ వీ ఫాల్ అపాన్ ఆర్ ఫేసెస్ ట్రైంగ్ టు గో అండ్ అండర్ నీత్ ఆర్ హెవీ ఐలిడ్స్ డ్రాపింగ్ ద రెడిష్ ఫ్లవర్ వుడ్ లుక్ యాజ్ పేల్ యాజ్ స్నో సుమలీ సో ఎవ్రీ లైన్ టాక్స్ అబౌట్ దేర్ ఎగ్జాస్టెడ్ you know self knees are not at all cooperating to move they stop and uh, even everything they could not see in the garden also the colorful things they could not see so eyelids are so tired so they are in a sleepy mood because of the heavy work children are supposed to you know work heavily even we have in our country we are talking about the england you know in our country we have a labor act child labor act anukuntundi children of this age must not work should not work ani so it put law on at least aa time lo ledu so that's what the poem is trying to say enta exploit chestunna chesina pillalni ante kallu terise tattu kuda led anamata nidra eppudu work and nidra work and nidra and they could not identify they could not open to see the beauty of the garden or the flowers or the colors of the you know world then another stanza for all day we drag our burden tiring day anta generally there is a specific time for work also first thing is they are not supposed to work at that age second thing is they are working more than they are one person is supposed to for all day we drag our burden tiring through the cold dark underground or all day we drive the wheels or iron in the factories round and round so what kind of a work they are doing is depicted in this stanza em pan chestunnaru villu it is depicted wheels ante something to carry and iron metal metal items heavy metals they are carrying in the factories round and round ante without any rest there is no break continuously they are working so the poet observed all the you know, difficulties problems of these young children who are you know put into laborious work so if we can quickly discuss the analysis of that this poem talks about the forced manual labor on children of that particular period children were forced to work and the revolutionary changes end ko chayante at a particular point everything will come to a boiling point it will burst out so they suffered and suffered and suffered later on maybe thanks to all the great writers authors poets who raised all these issues and discussed with the world to react so there were solutions for all these problems just because of literature literature has no boundaries even we talk though we are talking about the england situation we are talking here the whole world will be talking about this and the kind of jobs done by children is depicted here what kind of a job children are supposed to play you know have fun run jump and all these things but here they are doing they were you know forced to do the work more than their capacity and uh, for example dragging wheelbarrows or uh, working for long hours and uh, in the victorian background we discussed that 10 hours there was a movement for 10 hours work ani so our period mottham lo itla ఆఫీస్ టైం లేకుండా వర్క్ చేస్తుంది అనమాట అంటే ఒక పర్టికులర్ స్టిప్యులేటెడ్ టైం లేకుండా వర్క్ చేస్తుంది అందుకని దర్ వాజ్ ఎ మూమెంట్ సో నౌ ఐ థింక్ అవర్ వ్యూవర్స్ విల్ అండర్స్టాండ్ వై వీ స్పెండ్ సమ్ టైమ్ ఆన్ డిస్కసింగ్ ద బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ ఆఫ్ విక్టోరియన్ పీరియడ్ దెన్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ ఆఫ్ పోయట్స్ దెన్ దేర్ వన్ ఆర్ టూ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పోమ్స్ 
which are prescribed for our syllabus. So, this link is done. Otherwise, we will not remember. Adindu Jadwal, Victorian period, lo, King Evaru, Aval Andar Indu Manaku, Ankuntam. So, there is a lot of, you know, connection to uh, the background and the text and our teaching now. Then, no play in the garden, but children after their work had to lie down. Garden and you should play actually, you are supposed to play. Mm. This we discussed too. And they are made to heavy works like moving the iron and metals in the factories continuously without break, without rest. This was depicted wonderfully by Elizabeth Baron Browning through her a wonderful poem, The Cry of the Children. So, now if you can discuss what kind of questions we might get in the examination. First of all, we need to understand because some viewers might be in an enthusiastic mood to know what kind of questions we will get. Rather than being hurry in thinking about the questions, we must understand the concept and the poem and the analysis. Then let them give any question we would be able to answer. Now, as we have been saying, every text, every concept of the background will be a potential question. Pratyokata, year gani, while Rasna works gani, while upon theme gani, stands like form gani, even you go questions. So, for example, the Lajus Kunte, why children theme was taken by Baron Browning and Okur General Garaj? Because those days they were forced to work without any rule. There was no law, there was no act. And the moments there was an act, okay. Child Labor Act and a Number of Hours Act. Parliament, oh sir, if you can recollect quickly, the you know England Parliament was burnt and later on after the situation was controlled, then they started the Parliament. Then they made very useful policies in the Parliament. Yeah. Even the people suffered, as we discussed earlier also, the governments, the kingdoms, you know, our rulers were very much afraid of writers, poets, authors, because they are public representatives, unpaid, unelected public representatives. And because of them, not only the problem will be raised, but the whole world will read then the world will question that ruler, what is happening in the country. So there were a lot of solutions. So it la stanza that in a put a Dean Pine a twenty question Ravachan Maname frame just couldn't better. If we look at the material that is available outside, that will help to some extent, but that is not everything. That is not A to Z. That will only help. So Kuddika Mana e questioning attitude pinch call Chadutunapu. So time could save out. Let the poem jadvi, analysis jadvi, mali vere material, Atlantic questions are thunna jadvi, mali av gurdu vetu kodan ki bandi. Chadu thunna pade if you can just say, yeah, what is, why this is happening? Why she wrote about it? Inko point, why she wrote about this? Because children do not have voice. Children do not know where to shout, whom to report, telog. So, there is a lot to discuss about these poets. Evarete week, evarete chapalero, chapukolero, vala voice ni, Authors gani, poets gani, present yes, sir. That's another point. Yeah. So, we can analyze the poem in so many ways. So, if time permits, our viewers must also analyze, question, he stands alone, he stands alone. And we also discuss rhyme scheme, anyway, they could see that. Then, if we can go to the other poem prescribed for our syllabus by Rabindranath Tagore, the greatest poet, personality, greatest personality who brought Nobel Prize for India. His another wonderful poem is Freedom. Freedom on a topic in the coach in the Kura, again background connection. Those days, countries were fighting for freedom, including India. So, every poem can be understood, enjoyed only if you understand when that particular poem was written under what circumstances it was written and what they are trying to convey to the world. 
maybe suppression under them one reason they were not allowed to talk second thing is maybe literature reaches every nook and corner of the world right if you can take an example we do not know any great personalities we did not meet but through media through newspaper through television we know great personalities of the world very powerful yes or no that's why media is a fourth estate hunter yes. are you getting it then if you can look at the poem we already had a discussion about uh tagore ji tagore ji's great work gitanjali brought the wonderful uh award nobel prize for the country so and we would get lot of material on tagore ji's introduction to let us look at the poem freedom we can understand freedom from fear is the freedom what kind of freedom you will find different uh, kinds of definitions for freedom so in terms of tagore's uh, you know poem freedom is freedom from fear there should not be fear of anything that is the real freedom and then i claim for you my motherland that he is addressing motherland he is addressing the country in a way he is addressing the whole country people of the country freedom from the burden of the ages bending your head what kind of freedom tagore ji wanted from people of the country is you know freedom from all kinds of fear insecurity and uh, confidence even another you know bending your head and a line it reminds another poem written by tagore ji where the mind is without fear and inko poem good undi so tagore ji always wanted people to have courage you know confidence patriotism and no fear and maybe those days tagore ji as a you know intellectual great writer great author you know observed that people did not have that you know courage then another stanza is you know breaking your back blinding your eyes to the beckoning call of the future freedom from the shackles of slumber where with one more suggestion here is don't have a you know don't get confused uh, dear viewers if you don't understand one word or two word of a poem if you can understand one point from the stanza or a poem then you can understand other points so if you can look at it no doubt we'll have some tough vocabulary there slumber and a deep sleep so it says you know all these days we we did not realize our duty towards the country motherland india now at least come out of that sleep sleep ne etla compare chestunadu your you know negligence your fearful disappearance and etla compare chestunadu anidharam levandi annattu then you fasten yourself in night stillness mistrusting the star that sp speaks of truth adventurous paths this is another you know night stillness ante we did not do anything there right kind of a thing so you can analyze so just look at it so overall you know tagore ji was talking about to shed off all the negative qualities weaknesses of indians and be ready to fight for the you know uh, independence and uh, not only independence for the country but uh, independence for citizens too one should be an independent we always say though we have been celebrating independence people still are in dependence and another stanza says freedom from the anarchy of destiny whole sails are weakly yielded to the blind uncertain winds and the helm to a hand ever rigid and cold as death so all kinds of you know uh, weaknesses again are discussed you know like you know a ship will face lots of challenges in the sea wind and other things and you never know when the wind will attack when you are in a ship so but still the ship and the sailors continue their journey similarly 
one should face life anna meaning lo kuda ostundi ikkada and uh, rigid and cold as death anadu ante there are certain definitely there are all these negative things are rigid we have to break it open antadu and uh, these negatives weaknesses are like you know death as swami vivekananda also says strength is life weakness is death antadu so we find some similarity there in vivekananda ji's you know doctrine and also tagore ji's literature and the stanza if you can look at freedom from the insult of dwelling in a puppet's world puppet's world ante evaro chepte pan cheyadam kadu you be independent antadu don't run when others you know ask you to do something you develop your own individuality antadu don't be a puppet in others world hence where movements are started through brainless wires repeated through mindless habits don't have you know this mindless actions every action must have a purpose a meaning a clarity that's what so through this poem thakur ji tried his level best to instill confidence in people in those days no doubt we can understand this poem might have you know inspired millions of people and where figures wait with uh, patience and obedience for the masters of show to be stirred into a mimicry of life and he is closing that so on the whole what we can understand is freedom from fear antundo fear and we can say that all kinds of weaknesses one should shed off the way snake sheds off its skin useless skin or less the snake Right. so every useless thing even swami vivekananda says and incidentally swami vivekananda and tagore ji hail from the same land yes. west bengal too yeah. right maybe similar thinking shed off antadu swami vivekananda kuda antadu shed off everything that is dangerous or that will not help you to grow yeah. treat it as poison antadu meeku edi help cheya growth ki help cheya kada daniki just reject it so then from this poem also from every stanza please try to take the important point as we said earlier also a poem in the first reading cannot be understood please give more than one readings and start analyzing the poem from your first understanding of one theme of that one concept of that and then we need to frame questions based on that what kind of a freedom tagore ji was talking about in the poem freedom annar ankonde freedom of fear anoka line undi ante one line of the poem one stanza of the poem can be a potential question and uh, i am not surprised if few lines from these prescribed poems are mentioned and asked the candidates to identify the meaning of it or you know other points atla kuda ivvach because our examination system is quite different now we cannot guess totally what kind of a testing they are going to do kabatti koddiga lines kuda kodi important lines prathi la poem lo konni important lines untai vaatni koddiga rendu moodu saaru chadithe gurtundi potai from this poem you know freedom of fear annadu so then we have another quite interesting poem by harry ben for this mains examination then the title is trees title looks simple but the beauty of poetry is though it looks simple if the poem is simple then it will have lot of meaning that we can say so simple title let's see what uh, this poet harry ben is trying to convey through this particular poem first stanza if you can look at trees are the kindest things i know they do no harm they simply grow and spread a shade for sleepy cows and gather birds among their boughs 
And on the screen, we can quickly look at the rhyme scheme. It has a rhyme scheme. No and grow first and second line. Third line and fourth line also have a rhyme scheme. And this line, these are the kindest things I know. They do no harm. They simply grow under. So catchy lines, important lines, are theme-based lines we must remember. So such lines have a chance to appear in the examination. And the questioning can be whatever, whether the meaning, whether the other things. Are you getting me? So this is one more suggestion then. Because if you can look at the whole poem, we'll find these lines repeating. These are the kindest things. Another. So if you can quickly look at uh, the meaning of that, to you, what are the kindest things? Trees. Another. They are very kind. Another. Maybe he's uh, questioning the human beings also. Yes. You do not have this quality, but the trees have. So we can interpret the poem and its meaning in different ways. They do no harm, Anadu. You people do a lot of harm, but they do not do. Rather, they help yeah. on the meaning of this quote. And they simply grow, just to grow. They, they don't bother about obstacles. Man cannot move if there is a small problem. Ayo, you problem, a problem, a problem. They also face, but they never come to end. Fine. And spread a shade for sleepy cows. Not only they grow, but they also give shade to the other creatures in the world. Vere Valla could help Chestani. And moreover, wonderful line is they do no harm on her. And gather birds among their boughs. Shade kinda, vere creatures ki, needles tundi. And tree mottam, birds can net ki, you know, nest is tundi. So trees are doing great job on a context. Second stanza is, they give us fruit in leaves above and wood to make our houses of and leaves to burn on Halloween and in the spring new birds of you know, green. External feature again, first line, second line have a rhyming scheme and then third and fourth have. So that's why we depicted it as C, C and D, D, Adoka analysis. Then, if you can look at, they give us fruit and leaves. In leaves and other, and the chala jagrataga, pandina palla nistundi. It is giving that, okay. And wood for our houses, we use wood for our for making a house and furniture and other things. And leaves to burn on Halloween, and in the spring, new buds of green and other. Ikkada Halloween is a a festival conducted in U.S. in 31st October. What is the speciality of this you know, festival, the event is, all youngsters, children, all of them will wear a typical dress to create a horrific situation, just for fun. Scary room, like in Hyderabad, there are some areas to choose. Scary room, you get scared, different activities. Yeah. So they will wear different kinds of masks, addresses, environment. They decorate their houses, even dining table in a very scary way, a particular day. Okay. Eating items are good. It's the original shape. Everything will be scary. If you have a sweet or a lot of sweet, it's a different shape. It's a sweet or a sweet. So this is Halloween. Are you getting me? Because maybe our viewers, some viewers, not all viewers, some will have a problem because earlier we had seen these you know, callers saying that we have a lot of problem with language itself. Then how do we cope up with this literature part, poetry part? And so it would be some help for them. So this is another beauty of you know, this stanza. Then third stanza says, they are the first uh, when, they, when days begin to touch the beams of morning sun. They are the last to hold the light when evening changes into night. So the poet wonderfully observed the movements of the tree, the growth of tree, the contribu contribution of tree to the world, to people, and without any complaint. So trees, you see the movement right from the morning to the night. Morning it will be flourishing fresh green, lush green, then again, you know, 
when the sun comes, they look bright, right? In the daytime, again, they look differently. In the night, they are calm and quiet. And another stanza, and when a mo moon floats on the sky, they hum a drowsy lullaby of sleepy children long ago. Trees are the kindest things I know. Quickly, if you can look at the structure, rhyme scheme. We have a rhyme scheme for first and second line here, third and fourth line, sky and lullaby, ago and no. Then if you can look at the inner meaning of it, let us look at one kind of an interpretation because as we already discussed that a poem will have lots of interpretations based on our knowledge. And when a moon floats on the sky, they hum a drowsy lullaby. So in the night time, the movement of the branches of the tree will be like a lullaby. Lullaby intended to be a song sung by mother to keep the child sleep. Baby padukko ne mandu padukko alani pade pade lullaby jante. So these trees sing that kind of a lullaby. Lullaby itlo nta di chala soothing, pleasurable, slow, comfort, full of comfort. Of sleepy children long ago, trees are the kindest things I know. So maybe if we can get one or two important lines from the poem, right? What exactly the poet Harry Ben is trying to talk about through this line? Ani, trees are the kindest things I know. They the first line, whatever. So that's a, a small attempt to help the viewers about this particular prescribed poem that will not be sufficient and we must spend some time to you know, understand and study. And uh, some points about this poem we already discussed, how many lines this poem has, how many stanzas we have and whether it has a rhyme scheme, what kind of a rhyme scheme, rhyme scheme it is mentioned there, they could also see like A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, G, and H, H. E rhyme scheme go through. Then there is one image, maybe for the benefit of our viewers, Halloween, one you know, picture of Halloween, how it is celebrated in the US. See, everything is, you know, has a different uh, pattern, different design, different masks, caps, even eating items. And we have one more too. Another one, all of them have a different mass we can observe. It is Halloween, uh, the fest the picture. The okay. Children, youngsters, elders, all will dress. Yeah. Ante, roju bhai okay. And food also. Everything. Looking like that. Food items are different. It is in natural form. Yeah. ఉంటుంది <laughs> The poet mentioned yesterday. Oh. These leaves are not going to The forest is not going to be Ghost, ghost, another we forgot. <laughs> Chalamandi, they will dress like ghost. Oh. Mottam avan ne says koni. And ever ne gurtu patel le man maakara. Ikara they removed, you know, this, this is another picture of yeah, that. This is a little bit clear. Hmm. And the black dress, the face mask, face the mask lighting, dark. Decorations, yeah. all that. Different, uh, you know, uh, heels. Ever normal personality le kan bato. Okay. So, this is the end because maybe some viewers would understand the term Halloween. Yeah. Halloween fest. What is Halloween? October 31st. Then, if we can go to the other you know, poem quickly. Harindranath Chattopadhyay. Harindranath Chattopadhyay is yeah. Athan Goblet. He was born on 2nd April 1898 in Hyderabad. Yesterday, in previous episode, we discussed Sarojana Edu's work. Yeah. In the bazaars of Hyderabad. 
their another son of Hyderabad and he is son of Agarna Chattopadhyay. Okay. Harinath Chattopadhyay was a multifaceted personality. Multifaceted, he, he, he has a lot of credits to himself. So many feathers to his cap. Okay. Some people they struggle to do one work, but some people they do a lot of works. Yes. So Atlant personality. For example, he is an English poet, a dramatist, an actor, a musician. Music law, skill on the acting law on the drama item law on the poetry item law on the in Nekla Jai Saradeli. And his younger brother of Sarojuna Idu, the celebrated poet, poetess of Hyderabad again. Then his other popular works, few we could just mention here is Noon and Shaper, uh, Shaper Shaped. So he was very much what we can understand is as an, you know, um, literary figure. He is very much interested in observing the shapes. In the Kati, Atan Goblet, Goblet, in shaping, how things shape in our life. That is the theme. So, Atan Goblet, if you can quickly look at, O oh, silent goblet, red from head to heel, how did you feel when you were being twilled upon the potter's wheel before the potter gave you to the world? Mm. External, it has some rhyming, ekad rhyming with the heel, feel, and wheel. Yeah. Then internal meaning, it's a question. He's asking the goblet. Goblet and okunda, matikunda. Then adutunadu. Red from head to heel. Ante it is in the process of you know changing that. Kudiga. A chest to nabra kudiga. Red don't. Okay. Very good. How did you feel? Antunadu. There's a lot of change. How did you feel on the potter's wheel? I don't know. I, I think. Uh, People from the districts, they know how the pot is made. Yes. Maybe everyone should yeah, know Most that. of them, yes. Yeah. That's the reason I didn't uh, give a picture actually. Okay. Before the potter gave you. Ante, how did you feel? Ante? He's asking two things. Pot shape rakamundu etla undi. Aoutu nappud etla undi. Pot rakamundu etla just a matti. Yes. A soil. And then some water mixed or whatever. Yeah. But uh, how, how did it feel the process of Getting converted Turning into goblet. Turning into a pot. Tarvata shape ochindu kada potter to. Yeah. So mar etla anpi chindi ante. Let us see what interesting answer the goblet says. Okay. Ikkada goblet okate kaadu. Hmm. Our life also changes. Yeah. Every changing aspect is painful. Yes. Okar noka department to niko department shift jayeng ane edus niye unta ra department tolu veeram good. Ante the ekor reason unta thega da marcha dhan ki boss anta. But No, 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 no. Are you getting me? Akad Kelly job or challenges Oh, this is the reason. Can he changing process and painful? Are you getting me? So every in everyone's life you find this. So it's only a kunda question of the pillow or the pillow. Kunda to Etla Martla and do Etla answer JP in the Manaki in the point. Are you getting me? Maybe the poet has taken this as an example mm. to talk the philosophy of life. Yes. Generally, True. children will ask. Children will ask, surely. Definitely. They don't three years away. They don't They don't know. 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 Other one is, I felt, answer jept in the goblet, I felt a conscious impulse in my clay okay. to break away. From the great potter's hand that burned so warm, I felt a vast feeling of sorrow to the cast into my present this form. Anta easy gale di change, chala painful undi. You know, a burning situation gani, changing gani, a shape lo keladam gani, because he, there's a force. Yes. This, this thing, even ni. He's molding me. Molding into everything that was really painful in the thing. But uh, it should realize that it is of some use to other people when it gets the farm. Water. Mm. These days people are discussing that rather than the mineral water, pot water is good for health. Good. Mineral water is not problem. Are you getting me? So importance. Maybe you are very useful now. 
though the process of getting into that form is painful but you are doing you know more good to people and mm -hmm. then it will it will be happy and it will say that okay fine i'll bear any such pain if i am giving you know more comfort to others and yes so a a farm log bodam kuda thanaku ishtam ledhu it felt very bad before that fatal hour that saw me captive on the potter's wheel and cast into it his crimson goblet sleep i used to feel the fragrant friendship of little flower whose root was in my bosom buried deep anadu so idantha fatal hour antundu very a farm vache mundantha everything was very you know painful i could not take it i i was happy when i was giving you know a pleasure to the flower ante adi soil ga unnapudu akada plant vachedi fragrant flowers vachi adu unde akada naaku oka friend unde plant unde ipudu i am into a different shape different form different duty this i, I don't like it okay so every changing aspect right and god whose root was in my bosom buried deep a plant oka root a soil lopal untadi ante we were inseparable plant and the soil a yeah. iddar separate chesesindi ee pot kosam ee shape kosam ani but it has a different purpose now adu pot ayipoyin tarata dan purpose vere it is also you know getting useful to you know becoming useful to other yes sir so this is one you know a poem by the greatest poet chatopadhyay so it is relevant maybe the people may ask why should we discuss and there is a relevance every change manam illu marina office marina place marina job marina adi painful e untadi aa pradaka unda evanni relations anubandhalu ayyo ipudu vere vere department a meer etla vere mee dagara vere evalu vastaru ikkada it's a painful but every change happens for our better every transformation happens for our good we should understand on a philosophical meaning chatopadhyay ji ikkadistunnaru right so srinivas garu ee roju poetry section samaninchi interesting poets ka kunda halloins parties gurinchi kuda explain chesaru so really viewers enjoy chesar anukuntunnaru ee episode ni yeah enjoy cheyadame ga they should uh, read understand and do well in our exams <laughs> yeah all the best for the exams yes so thank you so much for the information yeah. i wish them all the best right so idi ivalti t sat special live show poetry section meek interesting ga undi ambar srinivas garu mundu mundu kuda english ki sambandhinchi marini episodes chese avakasam undi keep watching t sat